Well, the, the idea for the, the show kind of started four years ago. We did it for the first time. Um, I had been doing some stuff with Caesar Creek, the state park, um, for several years. They have a nice room to display things, and I, quite honestly, I was showing my stuff there, and it's like got really difficult to keep having stuff hanging there all the time when it was only my stuff. So I was kind of said, why don't we kind of start this little group exhibit kind of show, and I can we can advertise a little bit and get people to you know submit work and and kind of open it up to a much larger group of photographers to to kind of show off their work a bit we have a you know a lot of really talented wonderful photographers in the area and you know the state parks and all the parks and areas outdoor areas just give us some beautiful venues to photograph and i'm like so let's see what we can get together and and get it up on their walls so we, we, we selected the photographers for the exhibit. It was kind of a two-step process. So we, we basically advertised on social media and I put out information to a lot of the camera clubs and things like that. And they submitted their photos through email to me. I loaded, uploaded them to a, a website so that they could be viewed. And then I had, um, I got three judges basically to look at each photograph and score each one accordingly. We had, um, for this year, we had one photographer, an artist, and a um, magazine editor. So they, and the nice thing about doing it online is they can also be all over the state. So we had somebody from Columbus, somebody from Cleveland, and a local um, artist from, from Loveland. So we got really covered the whole spectrum because we were getting submissions from people all over the state as well, which is, was really exciting for me, which is what we wanted. So we have even photographs, if you, when you go around, you'll see they, they really do cover the state. We have from, from Cuyahoga Valley um, all the way down to you know the eastern parts of Ohio. So. There's really some beautiful areas here, so we, it was kind of nice to be able to get a lot of the state covered. The only criteria that the photographers needed to meet was really, it is a nature kind of photo exhibit, so, and, and then it kind of helped also with the state park, kind of reinforcing their messaging for, for you know, the outdoors and nature and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it was open to any park, state park, local park, it didn't matter. Nature preserve anywhere in the state. That was the only that had to be in, in Ohio and any one of those locations and just trying to keep it so that it was encouraging people to get out and photograph, really find and look for things in nature because it's, for me that's part of um, what I do in my work is to get out and, and really look at things in nature and, and find what you can, the, there's just so much beautiful stuff out there if you look and that was part of my, my agenda is to help expose people to, to, to that as well and encourage them to get out. So my, my background in photography started, I mean, like I think most of us when I was a, a, a kid, you know, I, I, I bought my first camera in my teens. I still have it, still works. Um, you know, started doing film um, and then digital came along and we started um, photographing with digital um, SLRs and things like that. And it just opened up a whole new, a whole new world as the quality of those cameras improved. It really got on par with film. So the, the transformation was, was really, was complete and I've always been kind of involved in and in kind of the artistic aspect of things my training is actually I went to school and for architecture um, and both of the programs I was in were in the School of Fine Arts so I was really exposed to a, a lot of that stuff so when I started getting in back into photography it really just was a it just was a, you know, it just seemed natural. It fit right in with all of my education and, and training and, and everything. And then it just kept progressing and now that's, it's what I do. I travel around and do a lot of landscape, nature and wildlife photography. So, so, so for anyone that's just kind of starting out and looking to try and, you know, really want to improve or get that, you know, those shots that are gonna, we all want the wow shot, right? First thing I would say, you just gotta get out and it takes a lot of, a lot of patience a lot of effort and practice and um, persistence. So, and you know, look at other people's work is one, one of the things I also suggest too. If you, especially if you find somebody's work that you really like and, and appeals to you and if, look at it and study it and, and try and think through what they did and then even reach out and ask them. I, I think the overwhelming majority of photographers are more than happy to share 
their experience and knowledge and you know it all helps we want to perpetuate the craft you know so anytime we get people just beginning and just starting out the younger people we you know I think everyone loves to get in and, and help them to, to progress and, and have the enthusiasm for it that that we we all have if, if you're interested in seeing some of my work I'm on the online um, I have a Facebook page it's Tom Cross photography and I also have a website which is the same name Tom and you can just look me up there because we'll be doing this again in 2023. So if anybody's interested in participating, you can just find it, find information there. We'll, we'll probably post some information early next year, April or May. And so um, look forward to seeing more work. I was really one of the things about doing this, this kind of show is it to me always just impresses me and blows me away with the quality of the work that we get from all of the people. We had over 70 photographs submitted. There's 21 in the show. Um, and quite honestly, any of those 70 could have, could have made it. And so it was really, just really exciting and encouraging and everything to see just the overall quality of all the work that's being done. Uh, I've got this picture here. It's an indigo bunting and it was a digital capture and a, uh, then I did a digital negative and then printed it old school in cyanotype. So you're gonna take the digital photograph, invert it in Photoshop, so it is a negative, and print it onto like an optical mylar. And it's a very clear substrate. It would be overhead projector film for if, if you're old enough to remember over, overhead projectors as students in our student days. So that same film, you print that negative on that and then you take a piece of watercolor paper and you apply the cyanotype chemical to it, part A and part B, and then put your negative onto it, put it into sunlight or an UV exposure box, and it will develop out, and then you, you develop it in water, and then you uh, put hydrogen peroxide to make the blue more of a, a Prussian blue more rapidly. It would develop over time, that Prussian blue, but the hydrogen peroxide makes it just pop blue right away. So it's a wet process. I do real estate photography and part-time, part and I do um, some medium and large format film photography, including wet plate photography, uh, tin types from Civil War era photography, and I've done some of the non-silver classic Sinclair, and I did that. This was actually for for one of the projects for Sinclair class. Started really uh, taking pictures of houses and with an iPhone, and then oh, I need to do a little bit better, and a little bit better, and I got a little bit better, and then I bought a medium format camera and took a class at Sinclair, got a little bit better, and it's just kind of grown from there. This is really part time, and I wish I ha I wish I had the ability to get out there and market this kind of work and uh, you know present myself to the world in this kind of in this kind of way. But time restraints keep me from doing it. So I was asked to submit a um, ton, ton of buttress up some of the submissions for the show and uh, just to round out. And I really wasn't. I'm like, well, I don't know if they're going to put this in or not. It had to be a photograph taken in an Ohio park. And I don't really have, I've got some in New York. I've got uh, some in a farm in New York. And I've got, I don't have a lot of quality stuff that were taken in a park in Ohio. And this seemed to be the only one. And this is my first time seeing the facility here in Springboro. It's a beautiful facility. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, glad, you, glad to be a part of it, proud to be a part of it. So don't worry about the rules of composition just starting out. Um, it's okay to start in auto and take pictures of what you want. I really, for fun stuff, I started taking pictures of my dog, right? And then it kind of grew from there. Get a little bit better, get a little bit more interesting. You know, the rule of thirds, I generally ignore uh, a lot of the other composition rules. I just kind of take pictures of what I want, when I want, how I want, and that's okay. So I have the morning mushroom piece on display today uh, behind me, up top. Me and my wife were walking through uh, Houston Woods uh, near Oxford, Ohio, and uh, we saw the mushrooms on the, 
the ground by the tree and we decided, I decided to take a picture of it. I've been shooting photography for about 10 years now. Decided to start, to start taking it seriously and create a website and try to promote my pictures that I have. Um, so yeah, so for about 10 years. So typically I photograph nature, wildlife, and I like, uh, especially like to do uh, macro photography, which is uh, small things. So it was just uh, the composition where I looked at the, uh, the, the mushrooms and the moss and uh, the background where there's more mushrooms behind it too. Um, and I had to get down low onto the ground to get that, that angle of the mushrooms because they're tiny, they're down low. Um, and then trying to do my composition where you have uh, multiple layers or elements of things in, in, the, in the photo. My website, it's cbookerphotography.com. Just keep shooting. Uh, go out as often as you can to uh, shoot as many photos as you can of different nature and wildlife. Uh, one of the things I did when I first got started with my coworkers is that every day at lunchtime we would go out to a local park and shoot whatever we could find at the local park. Parks is where I go to get away from work for nature and just go for a walk even if it's just for 10-15 minutes and you can take pictures of birds, uh, trees, flowers, uh, insects, whatever you can find while you're there at the park. Just go check out cbookerphotography.com. Well, I have two photos on exhibit. One is the um, curving fern here, and the other is um, a photo of hepatica, which is a, a spring flower. Well, I've been interested in my teens. First got in, I had my first camera when I was 19. Some friends and I went out and took a lot of photos. We had a dark room back then. Got away from it for a while, but then I got back into it. You know, early 2000s when, with using digital. But uh, the type of photos I like to take are, are landscapes and any kind of flora that you know has the right lighting. You know, that's what I'm looking for is, is you know, what is the light like? You know, early morning, late afternoon. Probably showed my work for the first time maybe five years ago in Middletown. And I guess that's what really kind of got the juices flowing because I took first place with, with my photo. So then I knew, you know, I could do it. And I did that with the encouragement of my wife getting, getting into my first show. So I've been putting, putting photos into local shows ever since. You know, again, it comes down to the lighting and, and, and whether I can, I can work with it in, in, in Photoshop. You know, and I'm, I'm pretty new at Photoshop. I mean, I'm only doing, I've been doing it for a few years. It's pretty sophisticated software. Um, so it, it takes a lot of, a lot of a large learning curve. Really, just get out there and shoot, you know. Maybe take some classes, local classes, so you understand about film or, or photography, how all the, the, the different parts of the, the photographic triangle work, and just start shooting. Until you start shooting, you'll, you'll never figure out what your next step is or how to improve, really. So I don't, I don't have a website like a lot of people do. Uh, I'm not kind of shoot more for myself than anything else. I would love to sell things, but you know, I'm just, I'm not very good at marketing. So, um, you know, most of my stuff you'll see at shows or, you know, you know, they can contact me and I'll, I'll send them a link to, um, to my um, portfolio. So today I have my piece curling on display, which I took in the Innis Woods Metro Park in Columbus. And it has been one of my favorite pieces recently because I think it perfectly captures my style. And I try to find these fleeting moments in photography. And this flower I took a picture of during a thunderstorm, actually. The rain stopped for a matter of five minutes. The lighting was perfect, in and out, beautiful picture. And it's, it, really, it really excites me because like this flower may not be here tomorrow, but it was there today and that's what I wanted. I do a lot of macro nature, so I love bugs, flowers, leaves, all the teeny tiny stuff. I try to search for details and patterns that other people may miss, that's my goal. I have had a camera in my hands since I've been about 10 years old. I got my first camera for my birthday and I just, I fell in love. And since then I've just been taking pictures and taking more pictures, getting a little bit fancier. I love to go on hikes, that's where I do a lot of my stuff. So once I was old enough for my parents to let me hike on my own, that's when it really started and I just, I kept going. <laughs> So I have a website and an Instagram. My website is wonderlustphotographyoh.com and then my Instagram is Sarah with an H, B underscore 9614 and I post there pretty regularly. 
Oh, it's been it's been absolutely exciting and a little bit emotional. It's my first time kind of getting my work out there, and it's really exciting just to just to have people see what I've been loving to do for years. It's really really fun. Finding what excites you has been the biggest growth in photography for me. It just, it keeps me going even on days I don't want to shoot because there are subjects out there that I know want to be shot and that's just, I cannot stress enough, find what you love. The way I get my macro insects to cooperate is when I was through what I call photography yoga, which is just me in a lot of weird positions waiting and just waiting and waiting for them to hopefully get in frame and sometimes they fly away and we just move on to the next plant. I really view my photography as inspiration to get others outside. I want other people to love the natural world as much as I do, so just get out there and explore because that's what got me to here. I have a deer that was resting in the 95 degree summer heat in the shade uh, through about 30, 40 yards of bush, having to get down low, trying to focus just on his face. I noticed him while I was walking my dog through the paths dropped the dog off, grabbed my camera, came back and photographed him. He was still there. And now uh, they just recently bulldozed that bush area, so won't see that again. So I have a eagle, Willa, from the Carillon Boulevard Eagles. It was after Orv, her mate, who caught a big fish, got the whole sequence of him flying across the river with the fish. On the bank he ate most of it. And he flew away and she flew from the nest right to this very spot. I'm not sure how that happened, but she picked up the tail, took it back to the nest for the two fledglings that have not fledged. It was about the week before they fledged and I uh, caught her right smack in flight, just right over me. So it's so funny because when I go to photograph the eagles, nothing happens. He may wait 45 minutes to an hour and I'll put the dog back in the car, I'll put my camera in the car and all of a sudden there they are. So that's typically how it works. I'm getting ready to leave when they come. And in this particular instance, I had to call home and tell her I'm going to be a little later than I thought I was because <laughs> the eagles flew out. And um, it's just, they're just magnificent creatures to capture, you know, doing their life. And the fact that they chose Dayton in a close area to where they can you know, be observed and um, watched and the, the whole thing of their existence is just amazing and watching the eaglets hatch and grow and practice in the nest and then finally fledge um, you know and, and this year I only got a couple of the uh, fledglings just after they had uh, flown out the week after that one but it's so nice to watch the Carillon Eagle friends on Facebook to Everybody is there every day. I mean, even Christmas, morning, whatever, late at night, and um, you know, just to keep up with what's going on on the boulevard and all the other birds that are, uh, you know, I think we're so blessed. Uh, a lot of young adults, sub-adults, have come back to the area and uh, all the way up and down the river. Uh, I work in Piqua, and there's uh, two eagle nests up there, one north, one south. Um, you know, just just need to see nature come back. During the pandemic, it was, yes. But no, I love to do portraits, pets, people, fashion. Um, I do photo restoration work. To me, photography is capturing history and preserving that for other people, working on over 100-year-old photos and restoring them for people and making copies for the family. Um, it, is, it is, you know, history and personal history. And usually when there's a disaster, the first thing people are looking for are their pictures and um, memories. I knew there were several hundred people that had submitted you know, several hundred items and so honored that they chose two of mine uh, out of all those that were exhibited. And um, um, you know, it's an um, affirmation of, of the quality of work that I'm aspiring to. Well, I'm self-taught. I started off as a painter and don't have time to paint anymore, working a full-time job. And um, I do some digital work and digital painting. Uh, I see composition that way. Um, and, you know, I got involved with Tripod Camera Club and I've learned so much from those people. But I've read a lot and experimented a lot. And um, I remember going to a seminar of um, 
um, George Lepp, and uh, he taught me two things at that seminar. And first thing he was introduced, uh, he said, who knows what the best camera in the world is? And people are all yelling out all kinds of names. Uh, uh, like uh, Sony, can, you know. he says, no dummies, it's whatever camera you have in your hand, so you better know how to use it. So, um, you know, learning the limitations of what a camera can and cannot do, um, I learned from him. And then someone asked him what it takes to be a professional, and he says, you have to be able to afford a bigger trash can. And that was back in the film days, and now it's being able to afford bigger hard drives. <laughs> so. Uh, and having the time to, you know, go through them all. Um, but um, I like uh, studying light and how it sifts through the clouds or reflects off the water or metal or glass. And, um, you know, just to me it's all about the light. One thing I've learned from other photographers is how generous they are with the knowledge that they want to help people improve their viewpoints of uh, photography and like I said tripod camera club is one of the best moves I've ever made I've uh, been a member there five six years now and the way we learn there is they have judging and competition and it's then it's critiqued and it's critiqued in a very positive way how to create a better photo what would make this a better photo what was wrong with this photo and um, how can we correct that next time? Um, but like I said, George Lepp, um, several other national photographers, Moose Peterson, have been very generous with their knowledge and help. Uh, and, um, you know, just get out and shoot. I'm on Facebook, uh, Bruce Photo and Imaging, Bruce Photo and Imaging Restoration. I do have a website. I've been doing shows through Dayton Society of Artists and at Front Street. Uh, where I can. Um, I'm hoping to have a uh, wall to work on in, at the DSI, Dayton Society of Artists, in May. I think they, uh, so I have to work on that. I do a lot of Dayton Air Show. I'm sifting through several thousand of those images now, but that was a blast. I've had a couple from the last two years in the front page of the Miami Valley News in Miami County, so that was a thrill. I just love to shoot. I mean, and, and to me, the real camera is not what, I mean, I shoot, and what I do with the iPhone is amazing to me. But the one thing I also learned from other photographers is the true camera is between the ears, and it's how you see uh, the world, and uh, how you relate to what's going on. I love to do musicians. I think one of my greatest passion is capturing the art of creativity while it's being created. Uh, I love doing artist work, uh, musicians, um, anybody that can create art uh, and trying to capture that process. I appreciate that. Uh, right now I have uh, a bald eagle and the two baby eaglets uh, taken in Newcomer's Town as a unique uh, perspective of having a bird's eye view of uh, the nest. Most times that you're looking up at a nest and this one is you're kind of almost looking down into the nest. On well, Newcomer's Town what makes it unique is you drive up on top of this hill and that's where you're you're looking at you know eye level with it. I like nature, landscape, I do a lot of portraits, uh, family, uh, senior pictures and I do a lot of uh, like a uh, on-site printing with uh, printers and stuff like uh, Lebanon. I did uh, Lebanon High School. I did their uh, ROTC military ball several years in a row. Where I take their pictures and they walk away with a couple minutes with the prints and stuff, and some sports for Lebanon and stuff. But then I start taking pictures of all the other high school kids and I end up taking pictures for Lebanon local newspaper volunteer submitted photos for them and. Uh, and then just started progressing after that. So it's not my primary business, although I do have an LLC uh, uh, photo business. I just don't do as much that, as I would like to do with it. I put most of my photos on Instagram under Mark Newberg. So if people want to see it, they just Google, search my name, and it should pop up. My first time 
submitting my work to a show and to be, you know, selected and have one of mine get a ribbon and stuff. So I like it and I look forward to doing it every year now. So uh, the best thing that I tell people is practice. Over the years, I look at my photos from five years ago and they look terrible. So the best thing is practice. Take photos every day and just try to learn your camera and, uh, you know, manip manipulate your camera to do things. And, you know, I've, I've taught myself my own way of shooting, you know, photos and stuff. And practice is the best thing, I, I think. If they want to look at my work, I have, I think, 1,300 photos on Instagram. And it's a wide variety of uh, photos from long exposures to wildlife to uh, pictures of Cincinnati and stuff like that. So uh, I try to practice and do a, a wide variety of things.